Hello again. Uh, I thought I'd do another t quick tutorial. Um, my tutorials have been uh, well received, so I'll continue. Now, this is probably a mod that has been done a lot of times by a lot of people. Um, uh, this is a motherboard that is uh, came with my friend Brad's computer, and um, it was shipped straight to me so that I could get it all hooked up and ready for him. Uh, we're, we've done a, uh, we've we've made sure that it works. We've given it a floppy drive. Uh, we have done a ROM switcher, which was the previous video, and now we're going to uh, set this up with one meg of chip RAM. And the reason why I came up with that idea instantly was the fact that this motherboard came with an 8372 Agnes, which is a one meg chip RAM. Uh, chip so uh, the the motherboard itself is only populated with 512 and uh, the memory expansion it did come with a memory expansion however it's not ready to be used because it needs its battery replaced but I had an, an A I believe it's an A501 yeah um, with a already replaced battery ready to go so we'll give that to him and um, and that will constitute the one meg of RAM however in this current configuration by default uh, is it's only going to give 512k uh, of of chip RAM and then 512 of slow RAM. It's what's called slow RAM in the trapdoor. Uh, so, but however, it's very easy. Um, this is a release six motherboard. It's very easy to convert the RAM that's on this A501 to be um, another 512 of chip RAM which is much more useful than <laughs> you having a, it as is, is 512 of slow RAM. So this mod only requires modifying a couple of jumpers. Uh, th they aren't actually populated with an actual jumper. Uh, there's like a solder blob and a trace you have to cut and you have to move, uh, remove some solder, whatever. So we're just going to do that here and, um, and then we'll have uh, 512. Now, Right now we're going to, to test it as is. I've already verified that the real-time clock works. Um, and we're just going to make sure that we have the correct amount of memory. So, if we just click in memory, we can see that we have 0.5 megabytes, 512K of uh, chip RAM. And we have 512 megabyte, 0.5 megabytes of, uh, of slow RAM. So when we're done, this amount here should move over to here and it should say 1.0 megabytes and then zero over here. So anyway, that's let's get started on the mod. Now you could do this mod with by adding four chips onto the motherboard right next to the other RAM, adding the uh, uh, matching capacitors and doing the two uh, one or two jumper flips on the board and then um, you know that would work fine uh, however you wouldn't have the real-time clock that comes on this so you know I, I don't see a reason why to do to go without it unless I didn't have one of these you know but I do one came with this system so I may as well I mean I'm replacing it with an, an actually OEM one an a Commodore one same difference uh, but uh, we may as well use that and have the mem the real-time clock in there in case Brad, Brad actually wants to use it my friend uh, you know for productivity purposes and he's he's more of a program guy than a game guy he's more of a, a productivity program guy than a game guy uh, from what I understand so we're gonna make sure he gets a real-time clock so anyway the next part we will discuss what is needed to change the board Okay, so right next to the uh, trapdoor memory is a jumper um, JP7A. And as you can see, it has uh, its bottom two pads connected together. So the first part of this mod involves separating those two pads. And what that does is that prevents the um, expansion RAM from, from bringing 
the um, XRAM signal in the computer low. It keeps it high. This effectively tells the computer that there is no slow memory. So now, um, but the memory is still present in the system. It's still connected and powered. You know, it's connected to all the signal lines and everything. So the only other thing we have to do is cut. Let's see if I can get this. I guess I'll have to rotate the motherboard around for you to really see it. It's right next to the ROM. Yeah, it's right there. Zoom in on that. JP2. Basically, we're looking at the computer sideways. So if you were to look at it in this orientation, um, it would be the bottom two pads that have a, are joined together. So we're going to cut the trace between the two pads that, that appear here um, on in the middle and, and on the right. And we are going to uh, put a blob between the top and the middle, those two. So that's our change there, and that's all that's required. What that does is that changes the addressing of the of the expansion RAM, um, so that it shows up as chip memory. So, and those are the only two mods we need to do to get that to work. Uh, and of course, you know, as long as we have our 8372 Agnes, um, which can address one meg of, of chip, then then we're good to go. So we're just going to do that mod right now. Okay, so here we have the our JP7. Let's move the light really close, get a really good look at it. And I'm going to have to get way in here. It's hard to do this with the camera and everything else, so let's see. So we're just going to take our hobby knife and carefully cut lights in the way. Carefully cut. And I have to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to cut this trace right here. Okay, I think I've got it. Let me just... Um, We're going to dig away at the, uh, okay, that's pretty good, and we're just going to test our work with a multimeter on a diode test. Okay, you're thinking, okay, so we still have continuity, but no, if we're dead short, we get that noise. We're running through some passive components. So we're good, because that's definitely not behaving the same as if it was a dead short. Let's move over to JP2. Okay, so we're just going to do the same procedure we just did with JP7, except now we're going to do it with JP2. I'm having a tough time seeing this because the camera is in the way but let's kind of dig the knife until you get to uh, and I usually sometimes I like to turn the knife on its side Basically, I kind of want to, I mean, sometimes when you cut a trace, it kind of just sticks up a little bit. I think that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing some copper. So, we just want to kind of dig that copper out of there so it doesn't come back down and make a connection again. I think it might be okay. How does it look in the camera? It really does look like I separated it. 
Let's do our continuity test again. Nothing. Dead short and nothing. By the way, that ROM looks goofy because uh, check my previous video. It was we did a uh, we used a different chip to make dual ROMs and a resistor and it's actually one of the most benign looking mods you can do for a ROM switcher. It really is the most benign looking mods because it, it is just one chip stuck into the factory socket and um, and then one wire coming off to, that we just pull to ground when we want to switch the other ROM. That's the reason for the resistor to pull it up when it's not being pulled down to ground. And that's how you do it. You, on pin one is the selection pin between the first half of the chip and the second half. Anyway, all right, so now that we have that done, we're going to proceed to uh, soldering the top two uh, pads together. And then we should be done. Alrighty then, so let's just add some solder to those two pads in question. I'm not using any wick, I'm uh, um, sorry, uh, flux. Um, but I might need to. Okay, so I think we've got the, well, that middle one doesn't look like it's really, let's see. Okay, there we go. That middle one still doesn't look like it has anything on it, but it does. <laughs> it's easier to uh, accidentally short, short your, um, your bottom pin on there. Interesting. This is the first time I've done this mod. I've undone this mod before. And um, yeah, see, I think I have a technique for doing this that I usually use, and I'm going to show that to you now. Because we just try to blob it on there, and what'll happen is, is it'll get really, really fiddly, and the blob will go back over to the the other pin that we don't want it to. So it always is helpful to have a little piece of jumper wire to actually do a mod like this. You know, it really serves as a nice bridge over. Now, and we don't have to use as much. Um, we don't have to use as much solder. I think it kind of looks like I've bridged over to that that other pad. Let me just check it. <laughs> Power just went out. My multimeter is really old, but it, it works well. But it's frustrating. Yeah, it, it's it's bridged again. I don't have the B BP on there. Let's show you. Yeah. So, see what we can do is we can remove. We don't need as, that much solder on there, so we can remove some of the, uh, the solder. Let's see if I can find my solder wick. Just cut some of this off on the end. Oh, and another thing that will help us out is to use some of this because it will cause the solder to want to pool and pool into like a bubble, you know, bubbles or whatever. It also helps us get rid of some of the solder. So I'm going to see if I can just get rid of some of the solder over here. We don't have any. You 
do with some more light, but uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. It wouldn't look that clean, and that hole wouldn't have gone empty without the flux. Alright, well, did I get it on both? I know I got it on the top, or or from your perspective, the, the left one. I know we're not connected anymore. Let's just see. Yeah, we're not connected there. I think we are connected there. So yeah, I recommend a technique similar to this where you're actually using a piece of wire. It'll just make the whole process a lot easier. I mean, people will say, oh yeah, you just need to blob the solder on there. And then when you actually go to do it, it's like, it's going to take you like five to ten tries to get it, get that blob right where you want it. How does that look? Pretty good? Okay, so uh, we should be good. Let's take it back over to our test bench and give it a shot. Okay, so now we've done that mod and we have our RAM in here and all we need to do now is test it out. So let's turn it on. I don't have it hooked up. <laughs> that would help. I'm gonna need the mouse too. Okay. All right, so we're just going to go to memory, and here we have one megabytes of chip and zero of slow. And, uh, and that's all we need to uh, do. Just going to run a test for a while. This is a continuous test. It'll run for as long as you let it. Um, sometimes you do want to let it run uh, for an extended period of time in case you have a, uh, a problem with your RAM that doesn't show up until it warms up or... I mean, it could be any of the chips involved, Agnes, Gary, uh, your uh, RAM addressing logic, stuff like that. But anyway, so that's, that's how to do a one meg chip. You've seen it before <laughs> on other videos and on other sites, but I figured I'd just do it for continuity. I've done videos uh, for just about everything else. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. I almost forgot. Probably the most important part of this mod, and something that is sorely lacking in people's procedure for doing this kind of mod. So, when somebody opens up the trap door, this is what they see, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to put a note on it, right? So people know that they can't that it won't work without this memory because the computer won't boot without this memory so that's what you do yeah anyway uh, we'll see you guys later bye